Hiya, Carl. Great to work with you once again on the range yesterday. Just a quick recap on the key points of your session. First thing we were looking at was tidying up your P2 position. So waist level on the way back. When the shaft's parallel with the ground, the club tends to roll behind and open up a little bit too much. It's almost like old school way of taking the club away, opening the blade up, hinging the wrist pretty early, rolling the club face open so that we can roll it back shut on the way through. All good stuff that ruined many a golfer. So what we need to do is learn to understand why that's happening. Well, what we talked about yesterday was that during the backswing, accumulating number three, which is the back of the left wrist, was rolling open too early. So there's too much rolling of the, of the left wrist too soon. And if we want to police the takeaway, what we need to do is control what accumulator number three is doing. And what we've got here now is asking you to do the opposite. So what I've asked in the middle footage is you to have zero rotation of the left wrist during the takeaway. That's your only thought. And look at the difference in this for a takeaway. Now I'm not suggesting that this is the end product. But you can see there now, by rolling the left wrist less, or at, actually rolling the left wrist not at all, you've now produced a totally different line to your swing. We've gone from having the club too far behind us, and the club face rotated open, to now a club that's more in front of us, and a club face that's shut to the path. Also, when you do that in regards to stack and tilt, we're trying to turn the shoulders on a tilted angle at 90 degrees to our inclination to the ground. If we look at the shoulder pitch on this one and compare that to the shoulder pitch on this one, what we do in the takeaway has a dramatic effect on what happens with the rest of your swing. You can see there now that the left shoulder has worked down more as opposed to a cross, as per our email conversation a few weeks ago. So, somewhere in between those two is the swing that we would like. This is your first attempt at it. This is about two practice swings after having this suggested. And you can see there that there's a marked difference in the position you arrive at in the early part of your takeaway. So let's get rid of those lines. There you go. Pictures change very quickly just by putting the attention on what the left wrist or back of the left hand is doing during the early part of your swing. So that was tidying up P2. The other thing we worked on was improving your ability to extend through the ball, continue to move forward and control the rate of closure on the club face. If we watch what happens here now in the middle footage, the right knee kicks in a little bit too much coming through the ball. There's a little bit too much rotation. And we see quite a lot of club face, club face rotation also. So we've got club face closing down. Ignore the angle. Get rid of that one. Put the line on. Club face closing down quite a lot. As we come through. Daylight between the knees. Right arm wrapping over. The left club face rotated over in the through swing. All I've asked you to do at this point, forget the takeaway because the takeaway you weren't really concentrating on in this swing, so I'm going to cut you a bit of slack on that one. Takeaway wasn't as good as the takeaway on the middle swing, but having said that, it wasn't quite as bad as your initial move. But from the top, all I've asked you to do now is work really hard here now on stopping at chest height. First of all, we have a little bit less rotation in the face at that point. But watch this next bit. No daylight coming between the knees. No right arm wrapping over. Look at the difference in the club face position at that point. So your rate of closure, your line of compression has been controlled much better coming through impact. And the fact that there's no daylight between the knees suggests that we've moved in a more linear manner rather than rotating too much. We'll just take you back to impact or just after impact. We have more rotation on this one than we do on this one. We can see a little bit more of the left leg. 
the right knee's kicked out a little bit more, the right heel's come up a little bit more, and as we play those two through together, you can see that you're hitting out at the ball for longer, you're starting to tuck the behind under better, and as you do that, you maintain your inclination to the ground much better as well. You can see there now that you've started to come up out of your tilt, whereas here you've stayed in the tilt, which is keeping the eye line also in the correct position, which was one of the other drills we gave you early in your session. If you want to control or police your inclination to the ground during the golf swing when practicing alone, try and do it by controlling the eye line during the swing. If there's any questions, feel free to get in touch. If not, look forward to working with you again towards the end of the month. Well done.